Hey guys, Jay here again. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. It's a memoir slash autobiography written by her about her life growing up, moving around like a nomad. This book was actually recommended to me by my significant other, and this is one of their favorite books. I had bought this as a gift for them because it's the signed copy from Barnes & Noble a little while back. The signed copy. And so I borrowed it because they were rereading it, which I ended up reading it a lot more than they did. But this was an amazing book. I really liked it. And it's a memoir, which is something I don't normally read. I normally read YA adult fiction, um, mostly with romance like included in it. Because I'm one of those that has to have romance, even like the tiniest bit. Just something to like keep me intrigued and interested in the story. But this I thought was really amazing. Um, and apparently it's a, it's a movie. I did not know that, actually. Let's see right here. Um, I normally take off the jacket when I read, so I don't actually see all this. But it's a movie, and I actually kind of want to watch it now. And I literally just finished this. I, I give it a 9 out of 10, and this will be a kind of spoilerish free review. Because it's not like it's a series book. It's not like it's like something made up fiction wise it's a memoir and it's an autobiography about this woman's life and I honestly think it's truly amazing so let me just read you the synopsis Jeanette Walls grew up with parents whose ideals and stubborn nonconformity were both their curse and their salvation Rex and Rose Mary Walls had four children in the beginning they lived like nomads moving among southwest desert towns camping in the mountains moving among southwest desert towns camping in the mountains. Sorry, I read that awkwardly. Rex was a character, a charismatic, brilliant man who, when sober, captured his children's imagination, teaching them physics, geology, and above all, how to, embra how to embrace life fearlessly. Rosemary, who painted and wrote and couldn't stand the responsibility of providing for her family, called herself an excitement addict. Cooking a meal that would be consumed in 15 minutes had no appeal when she could be, she could make a painting that might last forever. Later, when the money ran out or the romance of the wandering life faded, the Walls retreated to the dismal West Virginia mining town, and the family, Rex Walls, had done everything he could to escape. He drank. He stole the grocery money and escaped and disappeared for days. As the dysfunction of the family escalated, Jeanette and her brothers and sisters had to fend for themselves, supporting one another as they weathered their parents' betrayals, and finally found the resources and will to leave home. What is so astonishing about Jeanette Walls is not just that she had the guts and tenacity and intelligence to get out, but that she describes her parents with just with such deep affection and generosity. Here's a story of triumph against all odds, but also a tender, moving tale of unconditional love in a family that, despite its profound flaws, gave her the fiery determination to carve out a successful life on her own terms. Mm, there's a little picture of her in the back there too so how the story starts is um, I believe she's three. Oh, she accidentally um, the story starts out I think modern day she's living in New York City and her mother comes up to her as a homeless person um, and she's on this on a on her way to this event or something and she's kind of, and she's embarrassed to be seen with her mother out on the streets of New York while wearing like a fancy dress on her way to a gala while her mother um, is homeless and ragged and run down and everything. Then it jumps right into her childhood, which I honestly don't understand how she can remember so much. Her story starts out when she's about three years old, I believe, and she's cooking hot dogs, um, boiling them in water and stuff. And cooking them uh, to eat while her mom I think was home painting in another room and so the water splashes up and burns her on her hip I believe 
and they take her to the hospital. The hospital treats her and then um, asks her a series of questions whether or not her parents abuse her because Dyphus decides to step in. And then they end up checking out the hospital Rex Wall style, which is um, her dad just coming in, grabbing her in the middle of the night and leaving. And they did the skedaddle, which is whenever they pack up all their stuff and move, which happens pretty often with throughout the book. They end up moving to... It's been a while since I've actually read the beginning of this book. It, they start moving around everywhere. They went to California, Arizona. Life was always hard. Um, her dad always drinking. And her mom was a painter who didn't actually want to get a job. So that was happening throughout their lives. There was once in the actual book itself, um, her mother's mother, her grandmother on her mother's side, had actually passed away and left the house, which was big and rich and everything, to her daughter. And they ended up living there. I believe it was Arizona. I want to say that it was Arizona. And they lived there for quite a little while until all the money ran out because... Uh, her dad took it to go out drinking at the bars every night. Um, he did try and stave off of the alcohol for a little bit as her birth, because he asked her what she wanted for her birthday and she said, can you stop drinking? Which he did for a while. He had withdrawal symptoms and then he was right back on the alcohol right again. When they finally ran out of money and left um, and left that place, they went to, I believe, Welsh, West Virginia, which is a coal mining town that Rex Walls, her father, grew up in. They ended up staying there from, I think, the ba about the age of maybe, I want to say she was like around the ages of 8 to 10, all the way to her junior year. Um, the dad's parents are there. They, the mom, Irma, the grandmother, Irma, hates them. And there's some insinuations of Irma sexually um, abusing her son, a.k.a. Rex, because she had tried to make some moves on Brian, who is Jeanette's younger brother. Actually, let me um, get those out of the way. Lori was first born. Um, Jeanette was... Sorry. Lori's first born. Jeanette was born second. After her was Brian, and after them was Maureen, who was the youngest, who was just a baby and was just born when they were leaving California. Um, and, at, and in Walsh, they stayed with the grandparents for a while. Then they were kicked out lived in their own house on top of a hill. Cheapest dirt poor house ever. And they were teased and bullied by the other kids within, at least um, Jeanette was, teased and bullied by other kids within town uh, for their dirty um, living style and um, other things of the sort. Sorry, I'm just trying to remember things from the book. At least early on stuff. The parents are really frustrating throughout the book. I will warn you about that. They are absolutely downright frustrating. To the point where I was like really freaking furious. Um, about some of the things that they did or said. Because the mother has a teaching license. She went to college and she has a degree um, in education and everything. So she can go get a job. She refuses to get a job. She does not want to get a job. She doesn't want to have to take care of her family. There was a part where she actually did have a job for a long period of time. And so she... And so she was forced to go to work by her children. She didn't... We didn't... They didn't have a car at the time. And so... The kids forced her up to go to work and everything. And it was actually pretty sad to actually to read about and not in a sad where I'm sympathetic towards the mother at all because I'm not because 
sorry about that. It'd be better for the kids had she actually gotten a job. She had a um she had a degree in teaching. She didn't want to teach. She actually did that uh once before, I believe, in Arizona. She was the only one with a degree in the family and she had this opportunity to work and she absolutely refused to and so all four of her kids are starving because of it which absolutely frustrated me and the dad stole their money to go out and drink which I thought was absolutely absurd um so it was just those kind of things that pissed me off the kids all escaped to New York City after a while after living in Walsh Lori left after she graduated high school. Um, Jeanette and Brian left after their junior year. And Maureen soon followed after at the age of 12. They lived in New York and things were pretty good. They were away from their parents and then their parents came. And um, they found a place to live. They had stayed with uh, Lori for four months. Got kicked out of there. Um, found their own place to live. Got kicked out because they didn't pay rent. Found another place, got kicked out, and soon they were pretty much homeless, which they were homeless. They were homeless people for about, the mom was homeless, by the end of the book, was homeless for 15 years. The dad ended up passing away because of all the alcohol abuse, and he smoked a lot, too. He was smoking like four packs a day since the age of 13, and drank, I think it said like, several pints worth a day which was absolutely horrible so he ended up passing away growing up with the other family members that they actually uh she actually does mention and talk about in the books uncle stanley um her grandpa from welsh they seem like good people in the beginning because they didn't really uh, mind about them too much except for irma irma was always the loud mouth like one of those um resting bitch face matrons that would be in charge of like dormitories and girl schools in private um all girl schools but uncle stanley ended up like what's the word groping her sexually harassing her uh his own niece and stuff touching himself inappropriately and when she told her mother the mom said um sorry rape is a word there sorry uh when she told her mother the mom said oh poor uncle stanley he's always so lonely and all this and i'm like your like 12 year old daughter is getting groped up and fell to up by her uncle who's your brother-in-law and you don't feel at all disgusted by it so there were just some instances like that that absolutely like pissed me off Jeanette uh talked back to her mother once because she absolutely refused to go to school and she refused to teach and she wanted to quit and she was the one making like 700 a month to be able to even pay the bills buy food put f uh, food on the table for everybody and she was the only one with the job at the moment. And she was like, oh, I'm going to tell your father that you talked back to me. And the dad, um, who had been taking money from her, from Lori, because Lori, uh, not Lori, from Jeanette, who was doing small babysitting jobs and everything, had um, bent her over and gave her um, a spanking with his belt. Which I honestly thought was a little ridiculous. The parents I honestly can't stand. Although throughout the... Um, as the uh, synopsis says that there's unconditional love, I don't see it. <laughs> but then again, I'm a kind of cynical person. Anyway, that's all I really have to say for the book. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just uh, talks about her hardships. Um, how she grew up. How her parents were. How she left them. And everything. I, again, I rate the book a 9 out of 10. It was really amazing. Just look forward to my next review. Thumbs up. Subscribe. You know, keep those comments coming in. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.